everyone. Welcome to this special breaking news edition of Threat Track for February 14, 2013. I'm Jim Clausing. Uh, late Tuesday, after we recorded our regular show for the week, anti malware vendor FireEye posted a story on their blog reporting a discovery of a zero day exploit against current versions of Adobe Acrobat and Adobe Reader versions 9.5.3, 10.1.5, and 11.0.1. In other words, all the currently supported versions. The initial report was very thin on details and gave no useful mitigation suggestions, but did note that the exploit was being used in targeted attacks in the wild. Late in the day yesterday, I got my hands on a sample and began analyzing it. However, Adobe has asked security researchers not to publicly discuss their findings until they and the antivirus and anti-malware vendors have had an opportunity to develop defenses for the issue, and we're honoring that request. Having said that, FireEye has since released enough detail that we determined there was sufficient info out there to warrant this special report. So let me talk a little bit about what we do know. The exploit itself is executed by some highly obfuscated JavaScript embedded in a crafted PDF document. FireEye reports that most of the variables in this JavaScript appear to be in Italian, which may or may not point towards the authors, but regardless, it then executes shellcode specific to the particular version of the Adobe product that it's running in. One of the first symptoms of the infection is that it drops a DLL named langbar32.dll, which purports to be a language bar add-in. This is its persistence mechanism. It's how it survives a reboot. It then also connects out to remote web servers and downloads secondary payloads that perform whatever other malicious activity the bad guys have in mind. As far as mitigation, the first response from everyone out there is don't open PDFs from people you don't know well. Well, yeah, that's obvious, that's rather simplistic and not necessarily all that useful. Of course, we shouldn't be opening strange documents from folks we don't know or even from folks we do know if we weren't expecting them. Some folks have suggested using an alternate reader, and while that may be somewhat useful advice, uh, some of the most popular readers have also been subject to an attack recently. Just last year, Foxit Reader, for example, had some pretty serious vulnerabilities that we reported on. So this isn't necessarily the ultimate solution. One mitigation recommendation for, from Adobe is within Reader to set protected mode on for potentially unsafe documents. I actually prefer to set it on for all documents, but their suggestion is for the potentially unsafe ones. This can be accomplished in Reader 10.1 and later by uh, going to the Edit menu and choosing the Preferences option. Then in the resulting dialog box, choose Security Enhanced, and then check the box for Enable Protected Mode at Startup, Radio button to apply Protected View to all files. Then uncheck any checked boxes in the privileged locations portion of the dialog. Furthermore, the Adobe Advisory links to a page on their site that gives sufficient info on the registry keys involved in these settings so that uh, this could be pushed out to an entire enterprise via a group policy object. So if you're using the appropriate versions of Reader or Acrobat, you might want to give that a shot. One other potential option would be to completely disable JavaScript uh, in the preferences settings, but few people do this because it tends to reduce functionality a little bit, but it's still something to consider. Uh, personally, being the, the paranoid security researcher that I am, I have two alternate PDF readers on my personal and analysis systems, and I tend to prefer to open documents in a sandbox environment such as sandboxy or on a virtual machine, and both things we've talked about in previous shows. One other routine I've begun using with folks who have to send me PDFs on a regular basis is asking that they digitally sign either the PDFs themselves and or the emails that they send, including attachments, 
using PGP, GPG, or SMIME. While this isn't foolproof, it's an additional layer of protection. If they don't do that, I usually try to either email or call them and verify that the document is indeed from them. Uh, just an additional layer of protection. Since all the vendors involved are working feverishly on the issue, I expect we'll start to see anti-malware and antivirus signatures coming out from the major vendors, perhaps as early as today. And I expect Adobe will update Acrobat and Reader pretty quickly. So keep your eyes open for these updates and apply them as soon as they show up. And that wraps up our special report. Thank you for watching. As always, if you have questions or comments, you can reach us at threattract at list.att.com. The program can be found at www.att.com slash threattrack or on YouTube, and the audio version can be found on iTunes. So until next time, keep your network safe.